Tonight, we want to end our show remembering the 11 million people killed during the Holocaust, including 6 million Jews. In just a few minutes, I'm going to sit down with a survivor of the Holocaust, born in Hungary's Budapest ghetto. But first, a look at some of the atrocities her family lived through and why she believes the message to never forget is more important than ever. Today, sirens sounding over Israel, but they were not warning of missiles. Instead, they brought the country to halt for Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day. Israelis stopping wherever they were, including on highways, to observe an annual two minutes of silence to remember the six million Jews, including more than one million children, murdered at the hands of the Nazis. Remembrance events also happening in Europe and here in the U.S. The Holocaust spanning from 1933 to 1945, when Adolf Hitler, his SS forces and allies carried out his so-called final solution, a genocidal plan to rid the world of Jews and also targeted others based on sexuality, race and political beliefs. The Nazis would find a cruel and willing partner in the far-right government of Milos Horty in Hungary. 1939, then uh, the life of Jewish people, the life quality, the possibilities decreased dramatically. You could not work for the government anymore. You had to give up leading your own businesses. You had to give up your wealth. You couldn't work in intellectual positions. By 1944, 800,000 Jews were living in Hungary. But that year, fearing further defeat to the Allied forces, the Nazis actually toppled Horty's government, putting in place the violently anti-Semitic Arrow Cross Party. Wherever they would find Jews, they would torture and kill them. In just eight weeks, more than 420,000 Hungarian Jews were transported to Auschwitz. Thousands more sent on death marches to Austria. In Budapest, an estimated 80,000 Jews were shot on the banks of the Danube River and 70,000 were crammed into a 0.1 square mile radius known as the Budapest Ghetto. Many perished from cold disease and starvation. These people found themselves in the middle of the coldest winter of the um, uh, 20th century with, uh, with practically no heating, no water supplies, no electricity. Hungary was liberated by the Soviet army in April of 1945 less than a year after deportation started there. Still, according to Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial Center, an estimated 568,000 Hungarian Jews died in the Holocaust. If you go to the countryside in Hungary today, you will find no Jewish people. Today, nearly 80 years later, there are estimates of 245,000 Holocaust survivors still alive. But according to the report, the median age of survivors is 86 years old. Organizations around the world working to collect their stories, making sure the world never forgets what happened. It's very important to remember every name of them. And tonight we are lucky to be joined by a survivor of the Budapest ghetto. Susan Kalev was born there in 1944. She and her mother are survivors of the Holocaust. Susan also works as an active member of the Holocaust Survivor Speaker Bureau at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, and she's the co-author of Remember Us, a book written on about stories from Hungarian Holocaust survivors. Susan, thank you for joining Top Story. Well, thank you for having me. It's very exciting for me. It is Holocaust Remembrance Day, and I know this is always a significant day in your life, but maybe it, it has a different meaning because of what happened on October 7th and the war right now inside of Gaza against Hamas. Talk to me about what today means for you. Well, I think even more than ever before, I think the importance of speaking out and not being silent, I think that's what it's about for me. That's what it's always has been for me. Because um, those family, the, my family who perished were silenced. And the people who survived were silenced by the trauma. There was no telling, I didn't know. I didn't know anything. My parents never talked about it. And this is why I feel that I cannot keep silent. I need to share, I need to tell the story, I need to remember the past, because that's the only way that we can honor that. And we have, we have um, Memorial Day, 
which is for memory, which is coming up soon, mm -hmm. is to, to, uh, to remember all the people who fell, who fought. We have July 4th, it's also memory. Yeah. It's all about memory. Uh, does the time now, though, with the, the protest and the war, what does it make you think about, about the time we're living in right now? It makes me very sad. It makes me scared. I'm scared of what's happening. I'm scared that it escalates. I'm also scared that it's not achieving of what they really want to achieve, which is justice and the end of violence. I think that, to, like you and I are sitting down talking, to sit, to talk, to listen to each other is, is the only thing that's effective. And I'm scared of what's going to happen. Are, are you scared of the anti-Semitism that you're seeing out there? I know a lot of anti-Semitism has sort of come to the forefront with some of these protests, not all of them, but it has come, come to the forefront of some of them. Yeah, it does scare me, but you know, the thing is that I'm, I'm used to it as, as a young Jewish child in a town where I was the only one surviving was a Jewish child. And I didn't know what that word meant. I didn't know why they were calling me names. And then after um, the war, the communists took over Hungary, and again, you could not talk about being Jewish. When I first came here, I was 12, and it was like, people said, I'm Jewish. They can actually say that. You could say that in the school. You could say that in front of other people. It was amazing. So what keeps me hopeful is that here you can say it. It's okay. This is free. And, and I don't think that I can be persecuted for being that. It is Holocaust Remembrance Day. I, I know you lost your father and your sister in the Holocaust, and, and you were born in the, in the uh, in, in Budapest the, ghetto? Yes. Do you remember, I, I know it was in the shadow of the Holocaust, but do you remember life at all over there? <clears throat> well, I, I was an infant, so that I don't remember, but what's amazing is that there is a phenomenon where I remembered my mother's memories, it's called epigenetic or uh, generational transmission of trauma. And there is a Israeli psychologist, Irit Felsen, who has documented that second and third generation can actually inherit the trauma. Even the DNA can change. So that I remembered as if I remembered my mother's story and trauma. Explain that to people who may not understand that it was it was difficult for you to talk about or you you had memories or you and your mother would talk about this. How, how, how do you how do you describe that? I had memories when I knew that there was there was a, a separation and a terror in my mother's life. But she was a parent who never spoke about it. And I was a child who never asked about it. Why do you think that that happened? Because I know that was pervasive in the Jewish community. Why, yes. why do you think the Jews were like that? Why they didn't talk about it yeah. afterwards? Yeah, because, there, you know, you, you talk about post-traumatic stress syndrome, and that's something that sort of came up after World War II, mostly in Vietnam and stuff like that. But right. you didn't hear about sort of Holocaust support groups. You don't, you don't really hear about that. Maybe a little bit now, but back then I know that wasn't no, a thing. No support groups, like we have PTSD, what you went through, and, and we're going to have to You had to keep it help. inside. Uh, I, I think they kept it inside. Number one, they felt that people wouldn't believe what happened. They, they, when it was so atrocious. It was, people couldn't exactly. believe one human could do this to another human. Exactly. And number two was I think that um, it was too painful to bring it up. And also, like my parents, they wanted to go forward into a new life. They had another child. They came to America, it was a new life, and you didn't want to go back there. Th that's, that generation felt that way. Why is today so important to you? I know you mentioned about talking about this, you mean, never forgetting the, the Holocaust Remembrance Day. You mean, you mean in particular today? In particular yeah, today? yeah, why, why, I mean, I know it's important, obviously, to, to all Jews, especially in Israel, but, but for you and, and, and this time right now, yeah. Yes, I mean, first of all, I'm happy to be here to talk about it. I mean, that makes it important. And also all over the world, especially in Israel, uh, there's a lot of memorials, there's a lot of uh, testimonials, uh, Holocaust survivors who still remember that they were present when it happened. And especially in light of what's happening now and in the upheaval and the protest, to, to commemorate this kind of atrocity and to remember what can happen really when, the, when we don't speak up, 
when we're not remembering it, when we're not talking about it, when we're not taking action, what can happen? Does it, does it hurt you? Can you see it? Do you turn it off when you see the images from some of the protests, if they're burning the Israeli flag, if, if there's posters that, that say something that could be interpreted as anti-Semitic. There's Jewish students we've talked to here in our show who said they, they, they don't feel safe on campus. I, I got to think that that bothers you. Yeah, I think also what bothers me is that what I read, um, that the students who are very active and, and very intense actually don't even know the story of Gaza and the story of Israel, of how way back this originated and the history of it. They're responding to what's happening now, but it's, it's a little bit naive, and there's a little piece of ignorance there, not enough information to know what's really happening. What do you hope happens in Gaza? I mean, you're somebody who, who suffered in, in a ghetto in, in Hungary. You're, you lost your family. Uh, there's a lot of people that are dying in Gaza, I, and I know this, was, this all started because of the, the Hamas terrorist attack. But I have to think maybe you, you feel for people in Gaza, too. There, there's 100,000 people trying to figure out where to go in Rafa right now, no place to go. Absolutely. I feel that having the history that I have, I think I have, I have so much compassion for those mothers who lose their family. I mean, I could just sit and cry about it. This is why sometimes I do shut it off. Uh, it's it's um, the suffering and the injustice is, is everybody. They, they lost the son just like the Israeli mother lost the son. It's, it's innocent lives caught up, caught up in this timing of history here and now. Yeah, you have a lot of wisdom. And in the studio right now, these photos, these are the photos of your family, right? Over the years, yes. I saw you come in here and sort of look at them and, and take a moment. My goodness. <laughs> when, when you look at them and you think about your own life, what, what have you learned? When I look at these photos, they are, they, it's, they, I, I didn't know, I, I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't know that this was going to, I'm going to be surrounded by my past. It makes me very emotional, but it also makes me happy that there is evidence that this happened, that this is where I lived, this is where I got married, I don't even know what's behind me, that this was my life. This was my mother's life before it happened and also after it happened. And it also tells me that even after this happened, you can make a new life and you can, you can bring forth a new generation and you can teach people and, and you can renew a life again. Susan, we thank you so much for being here and we thank you for sharing so much. What a life. And we thank you for continuing to speak on what you believe in. That's what I do. And you had wonderful questions. <laughs> thank you. And I try. And it's so nice to meet you. We'll continue the conversation. Susan, thank you so much again. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.